Oh, it's great. Um, I know everything. I know what Aziz about. He know what I'm about. Um, and we, from at San Fran, just the culture that was built there. We're gonna bring it over here, just with the energy, the culture, just coaching, being locked in on different details. We're gonna bring that here in Tennessee. I would imagine, given you know how you ended the year, you had a lot of options. What yeah. was it about coming here to to uh, the Titans? Why why that decision? Hey, you see that D-line? I mean, Big Jeff, Danico Autry, Harry Landry coming back on the edge. I mean, it was self-explanatory there, just being with those guys and being playing against Tennessee, it was always Tennessee D-line was bullies. Like, that's how they played. Everything was a bully, we're going to bully. The offensive line, man, that's the type of play I play with. I'm a bully on the football field, and I feel like I fit right in with these guys. Jacksonville make it easy to leave there? Definitely, definitely. Um, the, since I've been in the league, I've been a third down guy. Uh, haven't really had the opportunity to come out and play a lot of first and second down or even having the opportunity to start. So being here, I had the opportunity to come in and start and show my uh, talent. You and the Titans obviously had some memorable matchups this past season. I mean, what, what is that like playing for them last year and not walking in this building with all the Titans logos? Oh, man. I mean, it's different. You know, I've been – I played at San Fran, been with Jacksonville, been with the Raiders. I mean, different team, different helmet. It, it doesn't matter to me. I'm, I'm it, it, it matters where I'm at on the football field and what I do on that football field. How do you think you'll do here? Oh, I'll do great. Man, we're going to get to the quarterback. They pass for us over here. We're going. <laughs> Had and kind of going through the free agent process, how much easier did it make the negotiations and stuff, knowing Rand and having a, a relationship with him from the past? Oh, it was easy, but I mean, I don't really talk the money talk. I let I leave that up to my agent, and that's why I hired him. So I let him do the money talk, and he handled it. Yeah, that makes sense. Played in kind of a similar position, and it's been known to get involved on the practice field. Some is that something that's been attractive to you? Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, he's a player's coach, and that's a, that's something he prides himself on, being a player's coach. He's been doing that. When I came out in 15, well, 18, he was doing that. So it's not a surprise. I came here on a 30 for 30 visit. So our conversations, seeing some of the familiar faces, I mean, it's good to me. You talked about trying to become a three-down guy. Was that something you feel like you were capable of the last four or five years and just weren't getting the opportunity, or is there something you need to do more of to be so a three-down guy? The first three years, I wasn't ready for it. The first three years, um, coming in, learning process, um, especially my rookie year I played, my second year, only played six games, got hurt, and then coming off the injury for my third year. So I knew I wasn't ready for that. Then San Fran came in and lit it up. But being around guys like Nick Bosa, Eric Arnstead, Sampson, Ebucon, um, all those guys, it, it, it grew me into – the player that I am today. And when I got to Jacksonville, I felt like I could start. Um, and obviously didn't do that. So now we're here at Tennessee. How did it feel to be wanted and how much you want to maybe prove prove these guys right for bringing you in here early? Oh, it's always good to be wanted. Um, anyway, you're always going to go where you love and you want it, want it the most. Um, it's it's going to be amazing. Because you, you're coming into a, to a situation well, like I said, you are wanted, you are loved, so you want to exceed the expectation that's been put on you by coaches, GMs, or whatever the case may be. But for me, anybody that put in put any expectations on me is nothing, because I got the biggest expectation on myself. So I'm the hardest critic on myself. So, yeah. Or Racy McMath reach out to you about uh, when you either before you came here or when you signed here? I reached out to them. So I reached out to Christian, Kevin Byer, Jeffrey Simmons, um, Patrick Holl Patrick on uh, Callaway, um, and I think I think that was it. They was just telling me things. I asked questions about Mike. Mike, how was he as a head coach? Um, and the energy and the vibe that's going on in the town, in the locker room that's going on right now. Do the team believe that they can win? Do the do the team believe that? They they can run the South, and a lot of the answers was hell yeah. You've been a solid player, obviously, but four, four teams in what six years now. Why why do you think that is? Why what? Why, why have teams been 
teams let you go? Uh, I mean, so with me and San Fran, they told me straight up, we, we don't, we can't, we can't offer you uh, anything. If we offer you something, it'll be disrespectful to you. So go test the market out and see. Um, with Jacksonville, it was a shock to me. I ain't gonna lie. Um, after the year, I thought I was gonna be a Jacksonville Jaguar, um, but I felt disrespected because I came in, came over there, turned the, built up the culture, brought a whole lot of energy. Um, Changed the city, changed the town, and I felt like I was in my right, right for mine. I was gonna be a Jacksonville Jaguar, but that didn't happen. Um, I still love the player, love, love the teammate, love the city, love the fans, but yeah, we gotta see them twice. <laughs> you turn up the culture. You're, you're, you got that energy in the locker room. Like, what kind of a teammate are you? Like, are you guys? You're the one running the the tunes. Like, what? Oh yeah, I mean, I'm doing everything. I'm a, I'm a jack of all trades, but I'm just me at the at the end of the day. Like, I am I am an energizer bunny. When I wake up. Six in the morning, you're gonna hit my mouth. Before I go to sleep, you're gonna hit my mouth. When I'm going to sleep, when I while I'm sleeping, you're gonna hit my mouth because I snore. So <laughs> so it's just I am a big energy guy and I love to win. And being at San Fran, it they taught me the ropes on what it looked like to win. So everywhere I go, I try to match that formula to anywhere I go because I mean that's a track record that is hard not to follow. Clear, you know, you're passionate about the game. What is it that you love so much about football? Uh, the camaraderie with the teammates, with, with my teammates. Um, and then getting to the quarterback. I love hitting quarterbacks. I love disrupting the game. Even if I'm not hitting the quarterback, if I'm in the quarterback face and my guy get a pick, that gets me going. Um, it's just, but most of all, it's the team. It's being around those guys each and every day, going out and working and having fun, whether it's on the football field or not on the football field. It's just being with that team and that camaraderie. I mean, you can't beat it. You were absolutely instrumental in this team not advancing last year. Uh, were those two of your better games last year, and how much joy did you take in that? Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So... Being in the league, the, um, November, November, December, that's where you want to play. That's where the level of play has to increase because you're going into playoff football. Everything counts then. You can start off hot. We all seen it. Teams start off hot and then come in at the end and don't make the playoffs or being that team that's one game away from the playoffs. But I know that in November, December, you have to play your best ball. So if you look, of course, on the last – my last two years of my football career, that's where I show up. November, December, when we need to get to the playoffs and we're talking playoff football, that's where I'm going to show up. Being an energizer bunny, competitive athlete, it sounds like you also have a lot of confidence in yourself. Where does that confidence come from? Work. Simple, work. I put in the work. Um, and then it's God-given talent, too. Like God, God blessed me with some incredible talent that – I know some people can do, some people can't do it. I know it's, cert it's certain things I can't do and other people can do. So it's just the talent God gave me and the work ethic that I put in. And I love the game of football. I love, I love particularly pass rushing. I love getting to the quarterback. I love beating my man to hit the quarterback. And that's where the confidence come in at. Thank y'all, thank y'all. I guess first off, just what about what do you think about the opportunity here, and maybe what Ryan tell you uh, when he talked to you initially? Um, you know, I think it's a great opportunity. Uh, you know, I'm grateful to to be here to be a Titan. Um, obviously, you know, linebacker right now is a position of need, um, so I'm grateful to be able to come in here and uh, show everybody, you know, what I'm about and what I'm gonna bring to the table. Uh, talking to Rand, uh, you know, that's like family. So knowing him in San Francisco getting to be around him for the four years I was there. I think it was just a really good relationship that we had. And um, going into it, we knew that would be a good opportunity for me being here. So I'm just excited for it. How much untapped upside is there for them, given the crowd you were dealing with, I guess, in, in San Francisco on that loaded, loaded defense? Um, I think it's just, it's a situation in San Francisco where I was a part of, you know, one of the best defenses in football. 
uh, for a long period of time. You know, for those four years I was there, uh, we were top five, you know, I want to say almost every year. Uh, so when you get that type of depth, um, and you have that type of bond with everybody, uh, it definitely makes it hard when you got to leave. But at the same time, you know, just for the development of my career and, you know, where, I've, where my career is going, it's the best thing for me to just part ways with them. And uh, like I said, I'm excited. I think I have so much to bring to the team uh, as a football player, but also just as a person, you know, as a leader. So I'm excited to, you know, share that with the guys. Do you consider your game in terms of being maybe the three down linebacker that stays on the field in the nickel and dime packages? I mean, that's what I do. You know, I think in San Francisco, like we run and we hit like the entire time I was there, all the linebackers there to be able to play in that defense, you know, with D'Amico Ryans when he was uh, the D coordinator of that scheme, even with Sala, it requires a lot on the linebackers. So there's a situation where you got to be able to cover receivers. You know what I'm saying? You got to be able to take on offensive linemen and you got to be physical. So. Uh, those are things that I, I feel like I thrive at in all phases, and I'm excited, like I said, just for the opportunity to take control of it. You mentioned running and hitting and, and watching your film. Like One of the things, you seem to arrive at the ball before everyone else. Is that film study, instincts? How did you develop like that ability to read a diagnosis like that? Uh, you know, that's just a blessing that I've always had. You know, I've always had a high motor, but it's definitely something that, you know, was instilled just throughout my football career and even throughout San Francisco. Like. That linebacker group that we had, you know, we, we felt like we ran the show. At the end of the day, like, the defense is going to play good if the linebackers play good. And, you know, that's the type of mentality I'm trying to instill here as well, um, is that if the linebackers are playing good, then everybody else is going to eat. Um, so I just feel like, you know, that running, that hitting, that whole mentality that, that you got to bring, it's got to be like that. You know, you got to set the tone. You got to make sure everybody knows, you know, it's not going to be a pushover. It's not going to be an easy game. So. Relationship start? Where did it come from? What makes it such a strong bond? Man, I think um, when you build relationships over years, like you just talk to somebody, you don't know, you know, what somebody does. I'm a rookie. I'm just coming into the building. I have no clue who Rand is. You know, I'm just trying to figure out my way around the locker room in the NFL. So I think when you just start to just say, you know, speak to everybody and you know, just see what how somebody's day is going and what somebody got going on, and then you start to slowly talk to them more and more and more, and you just end up, like I said, four years go by and you've built this, such a close relationship with so many different people. And Rand was one of those people, you know what I'm saying? Somebody I watch film with, would break down my game, like would talk crap to me. Even if I had a great game, I might've missed one tackle and he's over there just waiting to talk crap to me after to let me know about myself. So uh, it's, a, it's a relationship, you know, that's a, a good one. Um, and like I said, you know, I got the most respect for him and, you know, I'm excited for, for the future, excited for the future and the direction that he's going to take this team and that uh, to be a part of that as well. So. I have the word leadership. You want to bring more to this team than just play. You feel like you're that type of guy. Why is that? And what do you hope in terms of leadership to bring? What kind of leadership? Well, you know, for me, it's been like that for me just throughout my life, throughout my career, uh, from college, high school. You know, I've always been somebody that first led by example. Uh, doing the right things on the field, off the field, uh, but also just the way I carry myself, the things I've been through in my life. And then even getting in the NFL, you know, knowing the linebacker room is a pretty young group. Um, you know, I've been able to study the last couple of days, some of the guys, and, uh, you know, being formally undrafted myself, having to work your way up, up the food chain to get to the point where I am now, um, it took a lot and I learned a lot. You know, guys like Quan Alexander, uh, Malcolm Smith, guys who I was with when I was a rookie, you know, they taught me so much and um, even growing with the group of guys I had in San Fran for the last four years, like you just learn so much. Johnny Holland, who's my linebacker coach, um, just they taught me so much. So I'm just very anxious, you know, excited to to just pour that out um, into the team and pour that out to my to, you know, just the, the whole organization, really. Do you want to be heavier and how much heavier could you be while retaining your speed? Do I want to be heavier? Well, hopefully I could be heavy, but just not like you. I was flat. <laughs> nah, <laughs> I'll give you a hard time. Now, nah, honestly, I, I feel pretty I comfortable. I feel I feel pretty comfortable about where I am. Uh, you know, I'm play around like 227, 225. You know, I prefer to to be up probably two, maybe two pounds, two or three pounds at most. Um, but I feel like you know my fight and weight. I should say my perfect weight for me is like 228. So my goal is to try to be like 230. 
going into training camp. So, you know, you usually shed a couple. So be like 228 during the season. What do I weigh? Uh, you probably about, uh, I'm going to say 210, something like that. Come on, 185. <laughs> yeah, it's that midsection, man. He holding all his weight. <laughs> He holding all his weight in the wrong spot. <laughs> You're part of, a, I guess, a free agent group of a couple of guys you've played with before. Uh, mm -hmm. What's that like coming aboard? Uh, and what can you tell us about those two guys? It just makes this, the transition for me a lot smoother. Obviously, you go into a place where you, you don't know many people. And even though me, like I said, I know Ram, but at the same time, like, you got to gel with the players. And that's going to take time. And you know, that's not something you can like, fake or rush. Um, but knowing Arden already, like we played in 2021 together in San Francisco and, you know, just the type of guy he is, y'all ain't meet him yet, I don't think. But um, when you do, you'll, you'll know what I'm saying. Like he'll speak for himself. Um, as far as Daniel Brunskill, like true pro, you know, he was undrafted as well. So when I came in, he was already, you know, in the league. But being an undrafted guy, you know, he did everything the right way. You know what I'm saying? He was somebody I modeled myself after, not on the field, but just as a pro in general, like how he carried himself, like was about his business, you know, showed up to work, doesn't say much, but he's a good dude, great energy, but like just gets his job done. So that was, those are the type of things that I could say about uh, those two guys for sure. He identified what this team wanted to be all about playing football. Is it the same for you? Uh, yeah, honestly, I feel like, you know, you, you get to see different teams throughout the season when you're playing, you know, you're cross, cross referencing through film study, stuff like that. And even I think in 2021, playing against uh, Tennessee when we were, we came down here, I think a Thursday night game. And it was like, the crowd was crazy. It was honestly like a crazy atmosphere. Um, but you see like the mindset and what people are trying to bring. And when you feel like, dang, I know if I was in that situation with those guys, I could really help just mold and fit right into what they're trying to do and also like help amplify that. And so uh, it's definitely something that, like I said, talking to my agent and looking at the different situations, it was like, okay, I think if I can come here and really make, and we can make it work, then I think it'll be a really good situation. What so. specifically about the Titans defense is it that stands out to you? Man, starts with the D-line. Uh, honestly, obviously, you know, the guys interior that they have and even some of the guys that are coming back, you know, from injury. Harold Landry, you know, you just see see the same type of things that I saw with San Francisco. You know, in San Francisco, when we had our best D linemen and we had our best years when we had really good D line. So at the same time, not only with the D line, but the secondary, you know what I'm saying? Uh, some of the guys that they have in the secondary, I think it's just like, you see all the pieces kind of in play that can set you up for something really successful. And I just see, like I said, seeing myself mold into that, it's like, okay, if I'm in that defense with those pieces, I know I could thrive. So that's that's the goal. It's got some impressive jewelry. I'm just curious about the inscription maybe on the one behind that you talked oh. about your journey to get here. I didn't know uh, you were tell me about that. Yes, sir. So uh right here on this pendant, this is uh it's two it's double sided. So it has two different things on it. But uh one side is a quote that my mother used to tell me. Uh it's from the Quran. But basically, um, to sum it up, it, it was that which is for you shall not pass you by, and that which passes you by is not for you. And uh, I remember when I first started playing football, I was crying like a little baby because my grandfather signed me up, lied to the coach, told him I was super fast, had hands like Jerry Rice, and uh, went out there the first day, put me with the oldest group of kids because of what he said. And I remember we did an Oklahoma drill, and I got rocked. <laughs> And I remember I literally went home and I, I cried to my mother and I just told her like, you know, what if football didn't work out for me? Like, what was I gonna do? And I remember she just told me, all you could do is work as hard as you can, trust in God and everything will take care of itself. She, and that's when she told me that quote. And then on the other side I have is um, a poem called Invictus that my grandfather used to always tell me. And uh, I, I remember he used to tell me if I could remember the poem, he'd give me $5 when I was a kid. And I swear to God, I might still not know the full poem. Um, but it was the things that always stuck with me was the last two lines. And it's, I'm the master of my fate, I'm the captain of my soul. So, um, you know, realistically for me, I think it just kind of fit into my whole life, you know, because everything that was happening throughout my life, being homeless, you know what I'm saying, struggling, getting to the point where I was, you know, a top player in college and then tearing my ACL, having to go through that, being undrafted, you know, but just not letting anybody control my story and, you know, just believing in myself. And, 
just staying, staying the course. So, another story of, of of your family sharing one motel room and, and sleeping on the floor and the hour bus ride to school and all, uh, the fire and all of that. Did you ever imagine at that stage you'd sign a contract for for what you're you're making now and and how have you had time to kind of think about the journey? Oh yeah, I mean I definitely have different moments to reflect. I try to reflect often. Because uh, it is a blessing, I think, at every stage. Even to get in the NFL, I think, uh, you know, I remember one, one of the most, like, disappointing moments for me was being undrafted because I was sitting there, had this whole picture in my head of how it was going to play out. And I remember I used to close my eyes when I was a child. Uh, we were staying in that motel, and I would watch the draft. And I, every time somebody would get up and say, with the something pick in the NFL draft, they select, and I would just close my eyes and say my name. So I think... My whole life, I always thought that that's what was going to be, you know, for me. And so when I ended up going undrafted, it was like, what? Like, how could this happen? Like, I had, so I, I was disappointed in myself because I, I realized for that moment, like, my whole life, I wanted to play in the NFL. And God was giving me my opportunity. But I was so ungrateful because it wasn't happening how I wanted it to happen. So, you know, at the end of the day, I can't write a better story than God could have for me or for anybody. So... You know, I always say it's God's timing because at the end of the day, like, it's going to happen when it's supposed to happen. And, and I wouldn't change anything that's happened for me up until this point because I'm exactly where I, I'm supposed to be. And honestly, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't write it any better. So, Man, I definitely hope so. <laughs> so <laughs> I know, right? Look, my followers about to go down like 10 <laughs> No problem. No problem. Sorry, I just walked upstairs. And... <laughs> What's, uh, I guess what was your thought process maybe when free agency started and maybe how did this end up being, uh, being a place for you? Um, I kind of got contacted by, you know, my agent. He was, you know, Tennessee really likes you. And I just, it, it felt like a good fit from the get-go. And, um, you know, I knew I wanted a fresh start after my four years with the Eagles and, um, you know, it, it, it feels like they really believe in me here and I believe in myself and my abilities and that this is a place where I can really, you know, come help the team and, you know, grow as a player and a person. Was there other interest to sort through? Uh, yeah, there's a little bit of other interest to sort through, but ultimately, uh, you know, Titans felt like it could really be the next step for me. There were circumstances there that, that kind of kept you out of the lineup. You look at the great offensive line coach you're coming out from under. Um, how much did, did he set you up to come somewhere and, and maybe take off? Yeah, so I was very fortunate to be playing under Jeff Stoutland. And we even ended up calling it Stout University because he was, you know, such a great influence and in all the players that have you know, come and gone through him have, you know, grown tremendously, whether it's as a person, as a player, you know, all of it. And uh, I have him to thank for a lot that I have learned over these last four years. So he definitely prepared me and everybody else for the next step in their careers. You've had a, a experience at a couple of different spots, but uh, do you consider yourself primarily a left tackle? And is that what they have told you that they would like you to be uh, in the running for? Uh, left tackle is definitely uh, what I have my eyes set on. That's my goal. It's, you know, I'm going to compete and give everything I have to get that spot. But obviously, um, you know, I'm willing to do whatever is best for the team at the end of the day. But left tackle is definitely what I have my my sight set on. An entirely new unit for this team. Do you look to take a leadership role in that as a veteran and as a left tackle? Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm certainly willing to, like I said, do whatever is good for the team. You know, I'm not uh, known as much of a rah-rah guy, but I've definitely have been in leadership roles before in the past. And, you know, it's not something that I would, you know, avoid, so. You say the beginning again, sorry. How familiar are you with this team? Maybe how they play uh, and maybe just uh, how you might like fit into that. Um, what I know most so far about the team is just uh, kind of the culture around the building. That's what I 
asked a lot about initially when trying to find a new home is just, you know, what's the culture like? What's the camaraderie? Uh, excuse me. What's the camaraderie like, you know, around the building between relationships between players and coaches, you know, players, players, coaches, coaches, and that whole thing. So that really means a lot to me. And I, I can definitely tell just by who I've met so far today that it's a really good atmosphere to, you know, come to work every day and put the work in with everybody around you. When you look back at, at the Philly experience, if you can maybe undo one one piece of it to, to get back on track and, and, and to have panned out the way you'd like a first round pick to pan out, like what would you retract to have to bend the guy that they wanted when they drafted? Well, I mean, it's interesting. I never thought about that at all, like once. So I try not to think about, oh, what if, you know, what it could have, should have type things, you know. I definitely know that uh, my injury kind of derailed things, but like everything kind of happens for a reason. I believe that, you know, and I think that everything has, <clears throat> excuse me, everything that has happened up to this point, um, you know, has built me to what I am right now. So I don't think I would, you know, change anything. Yeah. Who are some of the guys that have reached out to you on the O-line, perhaps, and just some of the guys you were able to meet here? Um, really all the O-line coaches, you know, Haas and the, you know, Jonesy and them and uh, the assistants. So uh, I got to sit down and talk to them for a bit. It was really cool. I think I've seen a couple players around here, but uh, I'm going to talk to them all pretty soon. So I'm excited for that to have a fresh start do you think here and now in your career you can truly show your full potential of what you can be in this league I 100 percent you know firstly beyond grateful for this entire opportunity you know it the the emotions I felt pretty much well surpassed what I felt when my name was called at the draft um Sorry, just, but yeah, it was a very emotional time for me. And um, what was that? Speaking of the draft, because you were here, Andre. Like I you was, were yeah. on that red carpet. You know, I remember speaking to you with former Coog, and that was such an emotional time for you. So, is it surreal now to be in this spot, and why? Yeah, it's it it it's still kind of sinking in. Even right now, I have all the this Titan stuff around me, and it's still just. It's interesting that I remember the next day after I got the call, my mom was already decked out in Titans. I don't even know how she got the stuff. Amazon, ne like next day shipping or something, but <laughs> I thought it was pretty funny. And um, But yeah, I this is definitely um, a good place for me, I feel. And I know that I'm fully confident in myself and my abilities to you know, take everything that I've learned over these last four years and, you know, use that as a starting point, like a clean slate for here. And I'm just beyond excited for what's to come here. Generally rated as a better pass protector than run blocker. Is that fair? And and what's the method to layering the run blocking on, on top of the pass protection? Well, I mean, yeah, it's fair. I mean, everybody's got kind of like what they're they kind of specialize in and you know other things that need uh improvement and so i came from washington state which was, at the time was primarily just pass the ball every play but uh so i got pretty good at that and i really after getting to stout with the eagles i practiced it a whole lot you know different technique stuff and um over those you know four years i've steadily been improving in the run game too and i think this most recent year um has been the like the better of all of it for me so far so i'm still going up in that just kind of what did you learn about yourself through recovery and did you have to reinvent yourself at all afterwards or was it kind of just coming back to normal um it was it was pretty hard nothing like that had ever happened to me before and so I really had to kind of take some time to look inward and, you know, figure some things out.
and you d you do learn about yourself um, through experiences like that, um, especially when it takes you out of doing what you love to do for such a long time. But um, it really taught me to, you know, just really put your nose down and dedicate everything about yourself to to what you really want, you know. And so I wanted nothing more than to come back and compete for that spot and you know things obviously happen how they happen but it um it really built me in a way you know it I wouldn't change anything like I said because it's uh what helped me grow to be how I am now as you hit the practice field there's gonna be a lot of guys on that line looking at each other for the first time uh, how, how big of a challenge is that going to be to bring that unit together by September you know, I think a big part of it is just becoming really good friends. And at the end of the day, because at the Eagles, you know, we were all really close with each other. We'd always go out to eat, we'd always just go do fun things and hang out at each other's houses, whatever, you know, hang out after practice, play ping pong and pool and stuff like that. Just, you know, get together with the guys and, you know, pick each other's brain, learn how everybody ticks you know, get the different personalities to, you know, build that chemistry together. And, you know, just when you're in here, it's time to work and build each other up. I understand you do some impressions. Is that correct? And if so, uh, impressions. Who? Oh, geez. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we got one of stout, you know, we call him the Tasmanian devil sometimes. So as soon as we walk into the old line room, <laughs> he kind of, trips over his words sometimes but um yeah he we we like to make uh, impressions of stout sometimes it's pretty fun <laughs> oh i guess mulatto maybe it's like i don't know i don't do a great you know boy mate I mean, that sounded more british didn't it <laughs> good day <laughs> what's that Did you sing with all the rest of them no there was a reason I wasn't picked for the album. <laughs> yeah, definitely. But. What, what did Brand and maybe some of the coaches tell you about how they wanted this offensive line rebuilt? Um, you know, the gist of it was, you know, they wanted athletic guys that can get out in space, and um, they thought I was a good candidate for that and just some gritty, tough dudes that can work well together. So. Great you too. Thank you. Thank you. How you guys doing today? Good, good. Glad to be here. When Rand came here, that this might be a, a spot for you. Uh, definitely. I mean, going into free agency, knowing that uh, there's Niner guys going out to other places, definitely think of it as probably your first option to go to. So uh, I'd say that's you know definitely true. Down the line, was there any? particular area like right guard left guard center that they talked to you specifically about uh no we haven't really gotten into the the specifics on uh what position or anything like that um at the end of the day it's just how do we get on the field and how do we play that's kind of where i want to be at and I, mean, I got starts at all five and i don't mind playing any position just whatever position gets you on the field as far as the scheme is concerned was there anything that really you know stood out to you about this organization the scheme to make you come here uh, they like to run the damn ball, so I like running the ball. <laughs> when other guys talk right and left and, and it being difficult to flip, you've obviously been able to do that yes. uh, seemingly with ease. What, what's been the key to your uh, ability? Uh, I think uh, it, it's definitely hard. Uh, I wouldn't say with ease on, on stuff. There, it definitely takes some time to uh, kind of get used to each side. Um, so I, I feel for the guys that have to make those switches. Um, but it's definitely possible. And you'll go out there. I remember when I was going out at left guard, um, you know, you feel a little uncomfortable after doing right guard for so long for a little while. Then you go out there at left side, you know, it, it feels uncomfortable at first. But then at the end of the day, once you start playing ball, you kind of start settling down and, you, you know, it just becomes football and the instincts take over. So uh, um, it takes a little getting used to at first. But once you get like some good practice quality time at that, you can pretty much do whatever position. Um, I mean, he's just excited. He's just excited to, to kind of 
help grow the culture here and then uh, just kind of get to, to playing football. Um, we haven't talked too much specifics on that part. Um, just uh, excited to be here and uh, to be a Titan. As far as, as far as your, uh, your skill set, do you consider yourself to be more of a technician, a guy that can be used to pull and do things like that, or are you more of a brawler? Um, uh, I I mean, I, I would say, uh, I like to say I, I'm physical, but at the same time, uh, I mean, a tech, technician, um, for me, uh, I just know a lot about football. I mean, I'm a, I'm a smart guy, um, not trying to, to boast about that, but uh, I mean, I think for me, it's knowledge of the game, being able to apply what I've learned throughout the my time and all my experience to be able to put myself in the best situation to go against a guy. Um, but uh, I mean, I'm also not afraid to hit anybody in the mouth and, and you know, uh, to go out there and just play football and that's part of the game and that's probably why I love this game. So uh, I'd say a little bit of both. You yeah. mentioned your IQ and your toughness. Is that what you think what drew the Titans to you for the most part? Um, yeah, I would hope so. Like uh, I think uh, for me, the versatility was the, the big thing to be able to um, take advantage of that. Uh, I know that's one thing that they brought up. Um, but, uh, but yeah, that's... I mean, I got to play with an organization that, that, that's an amazing football team for four years, and uh, we were able to accomplish a lot of good things. I wish we would have gone farther than we did. Um, that's probably the most uh, uh, hurtful thing about that time there is not being able to finish what we started. But um, I love those guys over there, and, and I think this team has that. And you can tell the way they run the ball, the, t the, well, the, tell with the way they play. Um, how Vrabel's out there. Um, you can tell the genuine love for the game and all that. And uh, I can't wait to, to get started with those guys on that and to be able to um, take what I learned from the Niners and help these guys. And I mean, at the end of the day, I want to win football games. With such a restart, Daniel, on, on the offensive line here, and there's going to be a lot of new faces. How much leadership do you feel like you could bring to, to the group as it looks to gel in short order? Um, I mean, I think I can bring uh, leadership at the end of the day. It's kind of just how guys mess in the room and uh, um, it's just building chemistry. Uh, I think anybody in that room could be a leader, whether you're a young guy or whether you're an older guy, you can learn a lot from everybody there. Um, I'd like to, to be able to bring that, uh, that veteran figure for some of those guys that want to learn some things, be able to help those guys develop in their career. Um, but uh, I mean, at the end of the day, like, um, it's more of just kind of more of a brotherhood if everybody can, you know, work together. And that's one thing of the Niners, like uh, when we got in groups, like whether new guys were coming in or not, being able to mesh together, that's when you notice the, the best things. Like in 19, we had a lot older crew. Um, uh, those guys uh, taught so many, so, like me in uh, school, um, so much stuff. And uh, to be able to learn from those guys, it was awesome. And then as my you know, career went on, you start getting a younger room in there. And it's still kind of the same thing, um, but just kind of just meshing together as a group, that's the, the biggest thing. Tight end, did you to, to offensive line? Yes, I did. I played tight end in college. So what was that transition like? Were you resistant to it or were you excited about it? Uh, no, I wasn't resistant to it. Um, they uh, came to me my senior year, um, about the second summer session, and said like, one of the guys, he had a blood clot, went down, wasn't going to be able to be our – our tackle, they needed a guy, and they thought I could be the best position, our best guy to do that position at the time. Um, so I was excited to do that. And, uh, I played at, uh, I think, like 270 and was able to do fine. Um, and so, you know, at the end of the day, like I said, I, I want to win football games. How does our football team win games? What position do I got to be to win games? That's, that's what I want to do. I want to be on a winning football team, and I, I want to take that. And uh, I want to go win at the, the highest level we can. And, you know, I got to get a Super Bowl. That's the um, I mean, I, I had some teams look at me at tight end. I think that that could have been possible. Um, at the end of the day, you know, the team that wanted me wanted me at O-line. So, I mean, I would have done either one they wanted me to do. So. You're a West Coast guy, obviously. Um, yes, when it comes to just the South, how much did you know about it? How much did you know about Nashville? And has there been anybody on the team that has reached out to you? Um, with the, the Titans? With players, yeah. From from the Titans, yeah. um, I have not met anybody on the Titans. Uh, I don't know. I mean, throughout my career, I think there was uh, one guy um, that was with the Niners with me for a little bit that played for the Titans. But other than that, I haven't met anybody. Um, I mean, of course, walking through the building, I've you know met some guys today, but uh, have not talked to anybody about that.
Um, with the Niners, though, it, there's a lot of guys actually in the Nashville area that were former Niners. Um, we all know Kittle lives here. Uh, he's got this compound and a cult. Uh, he's got a bunch of guys working out there, but I know some of the Titan guys work out of there, so I'd love to t talk to those guys about that. And then, uh, But uh, I'm excited. Uh, I spent my first two years on practice squad with Atlanta, so um, I've been to the South before, and uh, I kind of know how that is. And um, I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to love this city. Uh, I've been here twice before, not very long, uh, just kind of short visits. And I'm, uh, I'm excited to, to be in the city and to, to be able to experience it. You've been reunited with Aziz here as well. Mm -hmm. man. How exciting is that? And maybe what kind of play are the Titans getting to him? Yeah, no, me and Aziz rode over to do our physicals together and to, to sign. Um, so we were joking in the car. And then also Arden Key, he played with the Niners. Uh, I know him very well when I signed. Uh, he congratulated me, uh, messaged me, and, and we talked a little bit. Um, so I'm excited to, to have those guys uh, just be former players because I know what those guys can do. They're great players, and, and I'm excited to be playing with them again. Yeah, you've been in Nashville before. What would you do when you were here you know, previously, and what do you think about the city maybe as a whole? One of my buddies' wedding, uh, um, that's uh, when I came out once before. So I uh, got to you know experience Broadway a little bit, um, just a short little weekend, have a little fun uh, with the guys. So then got to do that. And then uh, before that, I was actually driving my car back uh, from Atlanta. So then I, I stopped by, uh, got to, to experience a restaurant, but uh, didn't stay too long. You've played all over the line, but do you have a position that's your favorite or more, that you're most comfortable with? Um, I mean, playing on the right side, I've played more at that, so I'd say most comfortable in being honest. It'd be the right side, whether it's right guard or right tackle. Um, but uh, at the end of the day, like I said, I just want to play football. So whatever whatever position I can go out there and play on, I'll, I'll go play. So I, I don't mind playing left left guard, left tackle, center. Um, any of those positions I, I will enjoy, and I just want to play football. From, from uh, Christian McCaffrey to, to Derrick Henry, that's kind of the, the tall and the short of it. <laughs> I'm blocking up front, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, those guys are just great athletes in what they do on um, running the ball, and I'm, I'm excited for both. Um, uh, whether you make a guy miss or whether you run a guy over, you're still doing something to get more yards. So they're both the same in that way, and they're both great running backs. Um, they, they both play hard, and I'm excited to, to be able to be on a team with you know that good of a running back to, to be able to, you know, takes the, takes the pressure off you a little bit. Um, and it just makes you even more excited because if you can give that guy just any type of lane, you know he can take it to the house. And so that just kind of gets you a little bit more motivated knowing that you know if you give him just a little bit more space, he can you know make some big, big plays. You guys together on the same unit like you guys will have, what does it take to establish a culture together and set a tone? Um, just getting in the building, getting together. Uh, um, I think the more you spend time together with those guys, you can learn about each other. The more you guys talk out there, I think communication is the biggest thing. Um, the, the more we can all be on the same page and used to like, you know, how you block, um, how you run, you know, your wide zone and stuff like that. So you're not stepping on each other, you know, you're working together in tandem. Like if a guy's an angle set guy or a vertical set guy, um, kind of just knowing the guy next to you a little bit and being able to, so that, you know, you can set in unison and then it makes it a lot easier going against those D linemen, give them less rush lanes, less space to work with, um, stuff like that. So uh, I think uh, just working with these guys and, and, and seeing that, the, the more you can get together, I think OTAs will be huge just because, you know, you got a bunch of guys getting together, learning, you know, learning a lot about each other. And, and so then when the better you can communicate on the field and you got, you know, exactly what the other guy's talking about when he's saying something, because there's places you go to play and you can't hear a damn thing. So being able to like, if you hear barely what the guy said and know like what, exactly what he means by it, that's going to be huge. So the more you can be in unison on that, just the better it is. Kittle's tight end camp? <laughs> no, I haven't been to Kittle's tight end camp. I actually haven't been to his compound at all. Uh, and I call it a compound, his house. But, uh, um, yeah. Yeah, no, he has a turf field. He does have a golf course that he's building. He's got a bunch of stuff. But uh, I've heard it's great. He, uh, he reached out to me right away, and uh, he told me to, like, come by. Uh, I just know it's a little farther outside of Nashville, so I just got to wait till I get my car here or someone to take me out there because I don't want to pay the Uber ride out there. But, uh yeah, no, true. Yeah, so, but uh, but yeah, no, I just 
I, I told George I'm gonna as soon as I my I get out here and get settled in, I'm definitely gonna stop by. Um, he's a I love George. He's a he's a great guy, and uh, I'd love to see what he's got going over there because I've I've heard a lot of good things about it. Nashville and what, what, maybe what Vrabel and, and Rand told you. Yeah, I'm super excited. Um, you know, I know that wherever I go, my role is going to be first to just dominate on special teams and then really just do whatever I can to help the team. Um, hopefully, whether that's a little bit of linebacker here and there or whatever they see um, see for me is is what I'll do. So I'm excited about it for sure. You know, the Dallas coaching staff felt that you had room to get more reps on defense. Mm -hmm. That opportunity possibly here, how much did that go into your decision to come here? Yeah, for sure. I, I think it definitely did. Um, I could tell that they had value in me and thought a lot of me, you know, um, and the opportunity to do more on defense is definitely something that I've wanted to do and I think is this is a good place for it. Um, I think I kind of identify with, with the organization and the way they play football. Um, so, yeah, this is a great opportunity for me. Discovered your knack for special teams. Was that something that developed over time, or was it something you always had? Yeah, um, it definitely developed over time. Uh, I would say that I was probably one of those guys rookie year. I I, I knew it was going to be important for my career, um, but I didn't really pour myself into it here until probably my second or third year, and really kind of uh, discovered myself and and how to do it. So um, yeah, you know, it's it's a huge part of the game and. Um, it's really important, and I, I found my way on special teams for sure. Did you look around when you were here for the December game and uh, kind, of, uh, kind of interesting how it kind of developed that now you're playing here? Yeah, you know, I did, at the time, no. Um, you, kind of, you never really look ahead, or at least I didn't. Um, so thinking back about it, it's pretty cool. You know, I, I knew Nashville was a great city. Um, I've had some teammates that have played here and have loved it here, so... Um, I'm super excited just to be here because I know how great of a city it is and the, and the fans. So, yeah, I've been a couple of times. Um, once for spring break in college, and then um, I actually was here in South Morgan Wall in last spring. So, I'm a, I'm a big country music guy. You can't can't beat Nashville when it comes to that. So I I, I love it here. Having guys like you know, Tart and Simmons in front of you, yeah. I mean, they've had some linebackers who really excel. For sure, yeah. Anytime you can play behind guys like that, it's it's a it's a huge blessing for the for the backers. Um, so yeah, that's something that I'm really looking forward to is being behind those guys and working with them and getting to know everybody. And um, yeah, it, it, it's it, that's exciting for sure. You mentioned your versatility. Was that one of the big things you felt the Titans were most attracted to you? How would you describe your overall um, style of play? Yeah, um, I think so. Um, you know. Even even from college, I came in as a safety and kind of made my way all the way down. Played inside backer, played basically rush in. Um, so I've kind of done everything, you know. And I think that that will always be one of my strong suits and something that will help me. I think I have the ability to play Sam, Mike, or Will, and um, whatever it may be for the team, uh, I'm, I'll do it. You know. So however we can win games is is what I'll what I'll do into the special teams role a few years yeah. ago. What, what does it take to be a specialty player on that unit? Well, you know, I think you, you have to be a really good football player to be good on special teams, in my opinion. I think there's just so much that goes into it, whether it's blocking, uh, open field tackling. Um, for me, I think the hardest thing for me was uh, becoming a really good um, return frontline blocker. Um, I think that's one of the hardest things in the game. And if you haven't done it, you don't really know until you're out there. And I remember the first the first couple of games I played my rookie year, I was like distraught because <laughs> I, I hadn't figured it out yet, you know. And it took me some time, but um, I think that's one of the marks of a really good special teams player is if you can block on the front line, then you're a dude. And uh, so that's something that I've kind of taken pride in for sure. What's it like going to Dallas, <laughs> where everybody's looking yeah. to here, where seemingly Nashville's the only place looking? Yeah. Um, you know, I think it'll take some time, but it, it, this is a really cool opportunity. I think the city um, is a great place. You know, if you, we can win here, um, I think that it would go a long ways and be a lot of fun. Um, I'm from Nebraska and played in Nebraska, so I kind of understand that from a media standpoint, I've been, this is, you know, like I've kind of seen it. When I got to Dallas, it was like, it was just normal. That's what I expected. So um, it's cool, but uh, it doesn't really matter. You know, whether you're whether there's a 
uh, stadium full or there's no one out there. We're still out there doing our jobs and doing what it takes to win games, and that's the main main goal. Is it familiar with Josh Kalou? Yes. That's, okay, what's that's, your relationship I, with him? Josh is my guy. I actually, so uh, I hit him up probably about a week before free agency started, and I kind of just got the rundown from him, and um, he's had nothing but good things to say about it. He loves it here, and so um, I know when I talked to Coach Brabel, um, I didn't. Ha- I I already knew what I was thinking, you know. So, uh, but yeah, Josh is my guy. He's a great dude. Nebraska guy Will Compton was excited. About <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> Willie. Yeah, yeah. Have you heard from him? The boy. Uh, I haven't heard him since I've heard from him since I signed. Um, he reached out to me, but yeah, he's a great dude. I usually uh, I ran into him at the spring game um, at Nebraska last spring. So I usually try to try to talk to him here and there. But he's a great dude for oh. sure. Oh yeah, I'm I'm a, I'm a fan. I don't know if you could say I'm tier one. Um, I'm trying to be respectful of the tiers. You know, I don't want to just place myself as a tier one guy. But if you go through my my uh, podcast list, most of them are listened to. So I'm up there. Wait, if you're ten for him. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> sorry, Willie. Uh, I'm your your ten's still out there for him. I think he he can figure it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, no shots at Will. I am not going to be, uh, no shots. None. He's a black shirt, so Thank you. appreciate it, guys. Thank you.